Welcome to Scar Beautiful. I'm Andrea Castile-Smith. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a story, a story of triumph over tragedy, beauty from ashes, and just that ability to get back up. Because I believe that it is through our stories, we inspire healing in others, get perspective of other people's challenges and their victories, and more importantly, we discover within ourselves the true depth of beauty from the hardships we overcome. This is Scarred Beautiful. Welcome. Today's story is one that's familiar to most of us. It's of a woman that we all learned about as little kids. We knew about the angel who appeared to her. We knew of the story of the shepherds who came, the star that appeared to reveal that the Son of God was now here. We knew of the wise men that came and the angels that sang. But Mary's story is more than just the birth of Jesus. For Mary, the mother of Jesus, has a bigger story than just that. Here is Mary's story. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. What beautiful faith, for Mary knew that the sentence of being pregnant without being married was death, yet she trusted God. We all know the story of Mary and the birth of Jesus. We all know when she stood and watched as the angels sang. She stood and watched as shepherds came to worship. She stood and watched as wise men came and offered incense, myrrh, and gold to their king, and his name is Jesus. Yet that name has meaning, Jesus, for Jesus means deliverer. Did Mary know that when the angels sang at his birth, they were also praising him for not just his birth, but for his death? and his sacrifice. Mary stood and watched as Jesus turned water into wine. She stood and watched as Jesus made the blind men see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk again. She stood and watched as Jesus made the dead rise. But Mary is also a mother who stood and watched while they brought her son up high and crowned him with thorns and crucified him. She stood and watched as 11 of his disciples fled, denied him, and even betrayed him. She stood and watched as the angels that once worshiped and sang now were deafening silence while they crucified the Son of God. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, Jesus cried out. And Mary stood and watched. She did not forget all that the angels declared, nor all that, that Jesus had done. Yet there he was, and there she stood and watched. It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Could Mary have known that Jesus would rise in three days? Could Mary have known that Jesus would conquer death and bring salvation to us all? Could Mary have known that Jesus, when he breathed his last and final breath, was not only prophecy fulfilled, but that he would indeed become our deliverer? Mary, Blessed are you among women, for you are the one person who was present at Christ's birth, his death, and 
his resurrection. Although you stood and watched as Jesus died and many fled, you stayed and your joy and your pain is felt even today. For the brutality of Jesus' death and the torture he endured. And Mary felt and witnessed every one of those wounds. Yet when Jesus rose again, he appeared with scars on his hands and his feet and his side. In his resurrected form, he bears those scars. Those scars represent our forgiveness. For those scars represent our healing. Those scars represent our salvation, and those scars represent God's love for you and me. Those scars, His scars, are truly scarred beautiful. For Mary's story is more than just Jesus' birth, but also of His death, and more importantly, His resurrection. They found the stone and rolled away the tomb, then he went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood beside them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but Jesus is risen. This is Mary's story, and this story is truly scarred beautiful. Wow, what a powerful story. For Mary, the mother of Jesus, endured so much, but the power of the fact that she was present, not only in the birth of Jesus, but in His death, but more importantly, His resurrection. That is incredible. And we don't always think of that when we think of the Virgin Mary or the mo mother of Jesus. But when I think of, of Mary and her story, I think of actually the beginning of the Bible, the first chapter, the first book of the Bible, and that's um, in Genesis. Because what happened with Jesus was predicted even at Adam and Eve's fall. And when, when they fell in the Garden of Eden, God makes a promise to both Adam and Eve as he's speaking to the serpent. It's in Genesis 3:15. It says, "And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head." No, it says, "He shall crush your head and you shall strike his heel." Wow. So we understand that he was talking to the serpent, but he was talking to Satan. And who's going to crush the head of Satan? That's Jesus. And that's almost like 4,000 years before Jesus was even born that God spoke this. And there's so much power in that. Let me introduce you to my amazing panel of guests um, and women of faith. And I'll start with Tammy Vavala. She is a therapist with a master's degree in social work, and you have also are an ordained minister. Thank you for having me. Second is Lisa Chastain. She's CEO of Gospel Rescue Mission that combats homelessness and poverty and many other areas that uh, plague our city and our nation. So thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Last but not least is Dr. Maria Lugo. She is a doctor, a medical doctor in endocrinology reproduction, and she's also specialized and has a background in psychology and psychiatry. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I just love the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and how powerful that story is. And I wanted to start with you, uh, Tammy, okay. <laughs> <laughs> about, because you have a great background in therapy, and you've consoled and worked with hospitals mm -hmm. and the sheriff's department, right. and you've been on the front lines mm -hmm. of, of women who've lost children and have been there for them. You know and have worked with people and had to console people with that level of grief of losing a child. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know if that's even possible to really right. comfort anybody other than just be there and present. I know you've discussed that before. But um, you have, so you have an understanding of that grief that Mary must have felt in that moment when she's watching her son die. Mm -hmm. 
And also that comparative of she heard from Gabriel, the angel who appeared to her, who he was. She knew the promises. She heard the angels sing and the, the shepherds and wise men come. She knew all the promises. I mean, you got to also think that she also was the mother who said, Jesus, hey, there's this party and we're out of wine. Can right. you turn the water to wine? And what makes me realize is, is that she knew that he could. Right. So she probably was asking Jesus, like, I have a 16-year-old son and he's always like, I'm like, hey, Cruz, will you come and pick that? Because I can't reach that. Now he's like a resource, like as a mother, can you help me? And she did that with Jesus, like, oh, no, the party's out of wine. Can you help us? Right. And so she was. it was a resource to her. She's looking at this, young, her son and realizing, I watched the blind man mm -hmm. be healed. Mm -hmm. I watched the lame walk again. And here the Messiah mm -hmm. is now dead. Can you imagine that level of grief and faith that must have, like, so many would lose faith at this moment? Mm -hmm. And rightly so. Right. But she didn't. Mm -hmm. Because we know that in Acts, she was in the upper room with the disciples. Right. We see that in the book of Acts. So she was there. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just discuss, I'm um, just from any of your knowledge and understanding? Well, I think it's um, when you brought this to us and I watched that video, it, it brought up so many things of, of loss and grief, which we have talked about, you know, the um, grief cycle. Mm -hmm. We have talked about that and just even brought me to even awareness, you know, the very beginning, um, even all of us as being moms and being blessed with a child. And you think of that being blessed with a child and knowing in God's word that says created in God's image. So not God, not Jesus, as Jesus is God and is the son of God. But even having, feeling that, when you think about it, we're also pretty amazingly special in God's sight and eyes that he would give us even a child of our own. Such a gift to experience that. Um, and I thought of this song too, the song, Mary, do you know, mm, you know, I love that song. Mary, do you even know, like, did she even really know? Mm. Um, and then as grief kind of, and you and I having teenagers, I think is a season of recognizing that there's even some grief in watching kids grow up. And I thought of the story in the Bible where they had gone, I believe to Jerusalem to pay their taxes and were coming back as a group. And it wasn't for three days that they realized Jesus, Jesus wasn't with them. They're, where's, where's my kid? <laughs> they lost him. Mm -hmm. And had to go back and saying, where were to you? And temple. Jesus saying, mm -hmm. how did you not know I was with my father? I was at my father's business. And at 12 years old, and again, us having kids and having boys, and realizing the separation that starts happening as kids start growing, there's a level of realizing like we're not going to always be there to protect them. We're not going to be the ones, even though mm. the Lord knows how much I want to, there is that stepping out and separation. Mm. And then what did Jesus do or what did he say was what I reflected on as he's on the cross? What advice did he give us? And one of the things that he said was, first of all, he cried out to the Lord, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I'm sure parents that have gone through grief, if you have lost a loved one, and especially a child, the question you would probably have is, why me? That is the same thing even Jesus had is, why me? And um, that's impossible to answer of why we go through trials and tragedies, except bring us closer to the Lord, which is exactly what he did. Jesus then, at that point, actually told them to care for each other. So the comfort he gave leaving was he said mary to his mom mary behold your son you have your son to care for which was and john son, the beloved mm -hmm. right and then son you have your mother and so looking at it like then he will he will put us together with people for comfort mm -hmm. and then the last one of the last things he said of the seven things that he said on the cross was um lord forgive them for they do not know what they have done. And so I looked at the, all three of those as being an opportunity for comfort of what the Lord had said and what we now have an opportunity to hopefully receive and maybe even say to others going through going through loss. 
you know, what is when Jesus died, when it was finished Mm -hmm. and he let his, like his spirit left, Right. right? Everything went dark. Right. And, and it's like, I had to think that Mary thought that the angels that once sang were deafening, silent. Right. And how, like how confusing that must have been for her. Mm -hmm. And, um, the darkness just shows me that God knows what it feels like to lose a child too. Yes. God was grieving mm-hmm. in that moment. Mm-hmm. Like just the power of that. And I think what you said is so powerful, just like imagining being in her shoes and seeing that. I, th- I thought that was just really profound. So thank you, Tammy. Dr. Maria, I want to kind of get into the physical because you are a, a medical doctor um, a lot of us see these statues or these images or paintings of the crucifixion, right? Christ dying and just that brutal death that he endured. But we really don't know what was happening in his body, but you kind of have a clear understanding of all that's happening. I mean, you got to think, before he was crucified, he was whipped up until death, just stopping before death. Any more lashes would have killed him. So they whipped him up until death and then made him carry his cross, that Via Dolorosa path, till Golgotha, which is the Valley of Bones, the Valley of Skulls is what it means. You know, it's like he's carrying, and I actually walked that path. And it's not, it's not a quick path. It's quite a rigorous path through Jerusalem, right? And so here he is carrying his cross inches from death, just right from death, and then to be crucified. Um, And then they cut his side and water came out. Do you want to talk about any of the medical? And can you imagine, and you and I have talked in great detail, like we, you and I have talked about Mary mother of Jesus story, just the two of us and the power of it and, and our perspectives. And I know you have insight in that as well, but, um, you also have a medical perspective that I think is very powerful. And I'd like to hear from you. Yeah. You know, you said that you walked in Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. La Via Dolorosa, Mm -hmm. and it comes from pain, Mm -hmm. the pain that Jesus was experiencing all the way, pain. It comes from that, the name. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the, the, uh, the way Jesus was sentenced to die was the most cruel punishment possible at that time. Because all there was uh, decapitation or uh, cremation or thrown uh, to the animals, wild animals. But they picked that way of, of, uh, that, of death for Jesus because that was the death for people that were not Roman citizens, but slaves. And uh, they wanted to, to suffer, Jesus to suffer to the end of his last breath. Right, and then they nailed him to the cross, which wasn't wasn't customary either. They usually put ropes around their hands and feet, but they decided to nail him. Just more brutality mm-hmm. in that moment. And to to get his um, death a little slower, the process, mm-hmm. because the death of uh, in this situation of Jesus crucified, the death is through asphyxiation. Mm-hmm. It's because of the muscles, the respiratory muscles, the the intercostal muscles, the, the ones that are between your ribs and the diaphragm. They were getting weaker and weaker mm-hmm. until they couldn't do their function, which is, which is breathing, and then they suffocate. He, that's the, the cause of his death. They were other, this is the, 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 the reason but, you know, heart failure, uh, uh, dehydration, and uh, all together because he was terribly physically abused, was just not crucified. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was the cause of death 
for him. And can you imagine being a mother and like all the other disciples fled except one, John, whom he mm -hmm. said, this is your now your mother. You need to take care of her. And this is now your son. Like, you got to take mm -hmm. my place. Of, 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 obviously, his affection and love for her mm -hmm. was deep. And um, But watching every wound, mm -hmm. she stood. Mm -hmm. She stood there. And it's not like Jesus. She didn't leave his side. Exactly. And not like Jesus was like, you know, not moving until the death. No. Because what a person okay. does, he was trying to, to breathe and move and try to not to give up his, the weight of his body. You know, that's why they, they did uh, his feet also. And he couldn't even get like straight mm -hmm. and trying to breathe. And that was a very, very slow way. For him to die. And agonizing. Hours. Every hours move. Hours and hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to escape one pain, he inflicts another. Tries to pull up with his hands. Tries to pull up with his feet so he can breathe. And it's more pain and agony. Just so tragic. And I, I can't imagine her grief at that moment. But there is beauty, right? There is beauty in that three days later, he rises. And she not only was one of the few people to be present in all three, she was there and saw her son, the son of God, rise. And there, before, behold, now she knows he has conquered death and is risen from the grave and is the very thing that was prophesied so many years ago that he was bruised for our transgression, right? The, upon his back, upon his stripes, we are healed. So this is what it was all for. I'm sure she looked and suddenly realized, because he told them he was going to die. Mm -hmm. He knew, take this cup from me, right? He knew what was ahead of him. But I think it's just too hard to understand. Like even when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and was like, um, saw Jesus and he's like, Mary. And she's like, oh, Jesus, it took her a moment because it's like, it's just so hard to fathom all that was ahead of them. But that's the power. And the greatest um, beauty of her story is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Understanding her agony and the power of her faith, even in the midst of his death. And that's why she's blessed among women, right? But, um, I want to talk to you, Lisa, because what is so inspirational and so moving for each one of us in the resurrection of Jesus Christ is that he not only offers and he not only conquered death and he not only know will crush the, the head of Satan, right? But that he offers us that same resurrection power. And in your line of work with I mean, specifically addiction and homelessness, so many of us look at that situation and it, the overwhelming situation it is for many of our cities and our country and our world, that it's hopeless and that they're lost. But as someone who works under you as a chaplain in one of your shelters, your women and children's shelters here in Tucson, I see that same resurrection of life that happens in an individual while here on earth from lost and dead to sin to now thriving and living a full and complete purpose-filled life. Mm -hmm. That's what you offer in your organization. And I know you have a personal experience with that and I, because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and now you live that resurrection life and you have purpose and you give purpose to others um, and you have this beautiful ministry called Gospel Rescue Mission of which you lead among others. You also have Hope Fest, which you lead, which is an amazing organization as well. Um, I don't know how you do it all. <laughs> but um, w why don't you talk about that ability to use the very resurrection of Jesus Christ into your own life? 
Well, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, right? Amen. So the whole story of Jesus' life, of why God sent him here to die for our sins because he loves us that much. And his grace and his love and his salvation is for all. They just need to know it, right? So uh, the people that we experience are, are lost. They have that hole that they can't fill. So they try to insatiate themselves with alcohol, with drugs, with, you know, loving all the wrong places, um, all those things to try to feel, fill that hole. And we know it's not until Christ comes in and fills that hole that we can feel whole. And we see it happen over and over again with the, with the guests that we serve um, are really find themselves to us because they're lost, because they've tried everything else and nothing has worked. And so we get the privilege and the opportunity, and it really is that, to be at the right place at the right time. And um, that they're coming to us in a desperate time of need, and we're there to say, hey, this happened for me, and it can happen for you. And ultimately, you know, we all have free will, and we have our own free will to choose. Um, but And that's the Holy Spirit's job. But we offer the hope in Christ uh, with tangible resources, uh, with Bible studies, with chapel mm -hmm. services, um, through a whole faith-based curriculum of addiction recovery. And the rest is up to God and the Holy Spirit. And the things that we've seen with people's lives being transformed is just amazing. We see Christ's resurrection every single day in the lives of the people that we serve. And, um, and it's an awesome thing, you know, to see uh, people just in death <laughs> being, being transformed in the resurrection of Christ. And um, so we all have that opportunity, you know, that Jesus tells us to go into all the world. And, um, and so every day, you know, we're at the dry cleaners, we're at the convenience store, we're at the grocery store, you know, that we are to live out an example of Christ. And, um, and I don't know how many times, and I'm sure it's happened to you all too, that people will go, there's just that thing what is that thing about you? <laughs> you know, well, okay, let me tell you about it. <laughs> it's not life in Christ. And, um, and just so grateful, you know, so grateful that, um, to know that we're chosen, you know, and that he loved us so much that he would die so that we would be saved and have eternal life with him. I love that. Mm -hmm. And that is so beautiful. And it's what's so crazy is we do as human beings, before we understand and know God, we do try to fill that void. Mm -hmm. I think that void is just our connection with our Father. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you're in the presence of God, you are filled and you know it. And that that there's no void. And 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 you're just it is, and I talk to your women at like the chapel services, the women at the shelter, and um, say, we, we try to fill it with other things, and we are left wanting, yeah. mm -hmm. and we are left more desperate, mm -hmm. and the hole gets greater. And they agree. And I'm like, but when you're in the spirit, when you're sitting there worshiping, and you start reading the word, there's this filling, mm -hmm. and your spirit feels whole, and you're not left wanting. Or void. You want more of God, mm -hmm. and you want we want to know Him more. But He's such an answer to all that, right? Okay. He's such an answer, and that's why. I mean, you have many programs beyond just the Word of God and things like that that are practical. You know, healing, um, physical things that you offer uh, from all sorts. But at Gospel Rescue Mission, but what's transformative? is when they see and start to believe in Jesus Christ. You see that on them. And so that's so powerful. So thank, thank you for what you do. And thank you, all of you, for being here and speaking about this. Does anybody want to add just one more thing mm -hmm. before we go? I would like to say that uh, Jesus experienced the worst of the human beings around him. That's true. He experienced lies hate, 
Betrayal. Betrayal. Pain, physical pain. Injustice. Mm -hmm. Everything that we're capable of. And he went face to face with Lucifer himself and was tested. And then he understands our pain, physical, mm -hmm. emotional, especially mm -hmm. physical pain, because he suffered like us. He knows what it, it is to be treated in, with injustice, mm -hmm. lies, deception. False witness. Yeah. And then I just wanted to add that. I think that's powerful because when we, one of the things you say, Lisa, that I think goes with this is he says, come as you are. Mm -hmm. And you talk about how so many people won't come to gospel because they want to get fixed first. Mm -hmm. And you say, come as you are. And that's what Jesus says. And we're like, wait, wait, I need to get myself in order before I go mm -hmm. to God. But God's saying, no, come as you are because I know I'm not the priest that says, I'm not the royal priest that doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. I have compassion, and I know I have been tested. I have experience, like you say. Mm -hmm. So come as you are. Mm -hmm. Come as you are. There is nothing new for him. He experienced everything to the maximum. Mm -hmm. Death. And God himself mm -hmm. knows the grieving of losing a son. So I want to close, but before I do, those who are interested in Gospel Rescue Mission and what you do, I'd like you to just give some basic information so people can reach out if they're struggling mm -hmm. with addiction or homelessness or have someone that they love that is. Um, our God is a God who allows us to rise again, even from the worst of places. I know that in my own life, that God gave me grace when I didn't deserve grace, and I had nothing to offer him. But he said, come as you are, right? Amen. Come as you are. Um, so if you're hurting and you're broken um, and need to find that hope that you've lost along the way, um, you can certainly, in our area, um, come to Gospel Rescue Mission. Uh, GRMTucson.com is the website. You can learn more about the services that we offer. But it literally is a come as you are. And, um, and uh, we can provide hope and help to not only get you uh, back on your feet again, but put you on a successful plan for your life. Amen. And something so powerful about Jesus, who came and rose again and conquered death and rose from the grave, but in his resurrected form, he chose to wear his scars. He didn't have to. Mm -hmm. He still wears them today on his hands and his feet and his side and the power of that scarred beautiful story because he wears them because they represent our forgiveness and our healing they represent our salvation right mm -hmm. and now i can go before the father and although i am severely scarred in many ways self-induced right mm -hmm. sometimes i was a victim those scars represent yet jesus his scars cover mine. And I don't have to face the Father for my scars. He sees the scars of Jesus to cover mine. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, if you have that void in your heart, you too can live a resurrected life. I'm telling you, I have story after story how Jesus has changed our lives, how he has transformed what was ugly and what was angry and made it beautiful. So I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to pray with our panel, um, and just ask the Lord to touch you and speak to you, and fill the voids in our lives, because He can do that. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for what you did on that cross for us, how you sacrificed your life, that you gave yourself so that we may be healed, that we may be saved, that we may be forgiven, that we can come to you this day without having to change a thing, just come as we are before you, reveal our scars before you, and that you will cover us, that you, O oh Lord, will transform us. We are so grateful for the story of Mary, that her faith was stronger than, than death. 
and loss. That she trusted it in you, O oh God, and the promises that you made to her as a young girl. She trusted you when she could have been stoned for being pregnant. And she said, do have as you will, O oh Lord. And she trusted you and stood there and watched her son as he died. But then three days later was a witness to his resurrection. And we thank you for that, O oh Lord. And Lord, if someone is watching right now and they are feeling that void and they're, they're hurt and they're broken, Lord, we ask that you fill them and you touch them wherever they are, that they feel your presence and that they live, give their life to you and that they walk and they say, Lord, I can't do this on my own anymore. I need you. And that they confess with their mouth that you are Jesus, that you are Lord. And they believe in their heart and they accept you right now. And that as they do, they become too resurrected in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching. We may be scarred. Each one of us carries scars. But through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our scars can be made into that which is scarred beautiful. God bless you.